Kennedy, and I am the seventh child of Robert and Ethel Kennedy. I'm joined here today with my sisters, Kathleen and Rory, with Joe and Chris and Max. And with my hero, President Joe Biden. Yeah! President Biden has said very movingly that his long career in public service was prompted by a speech my father, Robert Kennedy, gave in Indianapolis on April 4th, 1968, the night Martin Luther King was murdered. Two days later, along with my parents and siblings, I sat in the den of our home in Northern Virginia and watched in horror as Washington burned. Daddy left the room and he got in his car. Maybe 15 minutes later, we were all still glued to the TV and suddenly Daddy was on the news. In the midst of the mayhem, trying to put out the flames of loss and pain, fear and rage in the wake of Dr. King's death. That was an incredible lesson to me as an eight-year-old child. He showed us that when everyone else is running away from the flames of anguish and despair, leaders run towards them. And that's who Joe Biden is. He is the first sitting president in our history who has traveled to an active war zone, not under US control, not once, but twice to show support for our allies. He was always running into the flames so we don't have to. In, in every imaginable way, President Biden has spent his presidency and his career running into the flames for working people, for moms, dads, families. He supports unions, a passion of my father's. He marched with the United Auto Workers during their righteous strike, which helped bring that strike to a swift end. Thank you, Joe Biden. He looks out. He looks out for teachers, nurses, truck drivers, gig workers. He has been tireless on relieving the debt incurred by middle and working class kids trying to get ahead by getting an education. Thank you, Joe Biden. He passed the infrastructure bill. He builds bridges. He has made the working American the hero of every story. Thank you, Joe Biden. He got inflation under control and violent crime is down in America under Joe Biden's leadership. He has us thriving again, believing again, behaving like good neighbors again. He stepped into the flames of chaos and turned it into community. Thank you, Joe Biden. We want to make crystal clear our feeling that the best way forward for America is to reelect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to four more years. Four more years, four more years, four more years, four more years. President Biden has been a champion for all the rights and freedoms that my father and uncle stood for. That's why nearly every single grandchild of Joe and Rose Kennedy supports Joe Biden. That's right. That's right. The Kennedy family endorses Joe Biden for president.
When Daddy announced his bid for the presidency in 1968, he talked about the perilous course our country would take under the wrong leadership. And he said, I feel obliged to do all that I can. I cannot stand aside. We are here because we feel obliged to do all that we can. We cannot stand aside. In this election, no American can stand aside. We must vote. In 2024, there are only two candidates with any chance of winning the presidency. We know them well. Four years ago, our country was crippled by COVID, chaos, excuse me, chaos and the effects of unprincipled leadership. Four years later, thanks to Joe Biden, we are enjoying an unprecedented economic expansion with more people working than at any time in our history. Over 15 million new jobs have been created, almost 800,000 manufacturing jobs. Thank you, Joe Biden. <laughs> Wages are up. Inflation caused by once in a generation pandemic is coming down. Thank you, Joe Biden. He's made vast investments in historically black colleges and universities to create more access to opportunity. He has appointed more black women to circuit courts than every other president combined. And put Katanji Brown Jackson on the Supreme Court. Thank you, Joe Biden. He rebuilt the refugee program that was decimated by his predecessor and brought together a coalition of world leaders to stop Russian aggression in Ukraine. Thank you, Joe Biden. We're standing here in the Martin Luther King Recreation Center for Children. As family members who lost our father, let us not forget that President Biden has always advocated for the rights of people to live, to play, and to go to school in communities free of gun violence. He signed the most significant bipartisan gun safety legislation in 30 years. Thank you, Joe Biden. As Donald Trump proudly brags about overturning Roe v. Wade, rolling black, back the clock 50 years to when women couldn't make our own health care decisions, President Biden is fighting to get our freedoms back. Thank you, Joe Biden. <laughs> this is only part of the very long list of freedoms and rights that President Biden is protecting during a period of constant assault. Make mo no mistake, all these rights and freedoms are on the ballot in November. Donald Trump is running to take us backwards, attacking the most basic rights and freedoms that are at the core of who we are as Americans. He said he will be a dictator on day one even saying he wants to suspend the Constitution so he can go after his enemies, after his critics, after the press. He is running to use his power to punish his enemies, silence his opponents, and incite more chaos, division, and political violence with his extreme agenda. He is the most anti-democratic president in American history. President Trump spews dangerous conspiracy theories on climate change, vaccines, windmills, and voter fraud. He is pledging to repeal the Affordable Care Act and cut Social Security and Medicare, ripping away health care and earned benefits for millions of Americans who rely on them in their retirement. I can only imagine how Donald Trump's outrageous lies and behavior would have horrified my father, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, 
who proudly served as the Attorney General of the United States and honored his pledge to uphold the law and protect the country. Daddy stood for equal justice, for human rights, and freedom from want and fear, just as President Biden does today. <laughs> Donald Trump mocks these values just as he mocks our system of laws. He predicted a bloodbath if he loses the election. We cannot afford to ignore his warning. We can say today with no less urgency that our rights and freedoms are once again in peril. This is why we all need to come together in a campaign that should not, not, unite not only Democrats, but all Americans, including Republicans and independents who believe in what Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. A vote, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for our democracy and our decency. It is a vote for what my father called in his own presidential announcement in 1968, our right to the moral leadership of this planet. As President Biden remembers, when Dr. King died, daddy addressed a crowd organized by John Lewis in the largest black community in Indianapolis. And on that terrible night, he said, what we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence or lawlessness, but love and wisdom and compassion toward one another and a feeling of justice towards those who still suffer in this country, whether they be black or they be white. Joe Biden's every decision is informed by his love, his wisdom, and his compassion towards those who suffer. That is why we are so happy today to pledge our unwavering support to President Joe Biden and President Kamala Harris. God bless all of you. God bless America, and please welcome President Joe Biden. Thank you. Please have a seat, if you have one. Mom and Dad, I hope you were listening. <laughs> what an incredible honor. What an incredible honor. I don't want to become emotional, but what an incredible honor to have the support of the Kennedy family. John White, Jr., thanks for those kind words and for carrying on your family's civil rights legacy. And so is your son, Kalen. Who, uh, who's doing a hell of a job in our campaign. He's helping us win Pennsylvania. Jerry, I, that, was, that was the most meaningful introduction I've ever gotten in my life, other than when my sister introduced me. And I want to thank you for your friendship well beyond the introduction. It's an incredible honor to receive the endorsement of your family, and it means so much to me. Your mom, Ethel, whom I spoke with on the phone uh, a couple weeks ago, well, I guess last week, to wish her happy birthday. She's always been so gracious to my family during the most difficult time of my life. She's done so much for the country and the world in her own right. And of course, your dad, who I never got to meet. I just missed him. He was a senator from, Syrac uh, from uh, New York. He came up to Syracuse University and spoke, and I waited in line, and I didn't get a chance to physically meet him. I never got, but he inspired me, and his passion and courage inspired my generation. Like millions of Americans, I remember that night on April 4th, 1968. I was finishing law school at Syracuse University. 
when we heard Dr. King had been assassinated. The pain and the outrage sparked riots and despair all across the country, including in my home state of Delaware. And then we heard a familiar voice I'd listened to many times. Your dad, Bobby Kennedy, standing in the back of a truck in Indianapolis, asking for peace and quoting one of his favorite Greek poets. He said, and I quote, even in our sleep, our pain, which cannot forget, falls drop by drop upon the heart until our own despair, in our own despair, against our will, comes wisdom through that awful grace of God. I had a hard time to believe that day that there was any wisdom. I'm trying to work out from despair where, where we go. It was even harder to believe just two months later on June the 5th. I just grabbed and learned of an incredible man later that night had been assassinated. Yet another tragedy, your family, and a gigantic tragedy for the country. Only two political heroes I had growing up were gone within a month of each other, months of each other. We faced a real inflection point as a nation. When I returned home to my city, Wilmington, one of the city's only cities since Reconstruction, to be occupied by the military, the National Guard, with drawn bayonets on every street corner for nine straight months following Dr. King's murder. When I graduated that summer, I went home to take a job at one of the oldest law firms in the state. But after only a matter of months, I left that law firm and took a job as a public defender because I wanted to be more engaged in the effort. I went on to run for the county council the United States Senate, and then as Vice President of the United States. I've done so in large part because I thought that's something your dad would have done. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating that. It's always been on my mind, and one of my heroes. Today, I sit behind the resolute desk where President John F. Kennedy once sat. And as I look from the desk, if you're ever taking a tour of the White House, I sit in that desk and I look in front of the fireplace. To the left is a bust of Martin Luther King. To the right is a bust of your dad. And I remember to keep, keep looking and remind myself what they would do in tough calls. The principles Bobby Kennedy embodied were principles taught by my grandparents and parents around our kitchen table. And that's not hyperbole. That's a fact. My dad said, everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity and respect, no matter what their station, no matter what. And they thought I was taught the worst sin of all, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. The worst sin of all was the abuse of power, physical power, economic power, psychological. That was the worst sin of all, abusing power. And that we have an obligation to each other to leave no one behind, to give hate no safe harbor. It's up to all of us to preserve and protect the very idea of America. You know, we're unique. We're unique in American world history. We're the only nation founded on an idea. Every other nation in the world is founded on geography, ethnicity, race, religion, except us. Think about it. The idea was we hold these truths to be self-evident. But all men and women are created equal in the image of God, deserve to be treated equal throughout their lives. We've never fully lived up to it, but we've never walked away from it. We've never walked away from it. And we're not going to walk away from it now. Today, we face another inflection point in history. The 2024 election about two fundamentally different visions of, for America. Donald Trump's vision is one of anger, hate, revenge, and retribution. He embraces the insurrectionists of January the 6th. He's running on it. And as mentioned already, he promised to be a dictator on day one, his own words. And he called for an, oh, he, you know he means it. And he calls for another bloodbath when he loses again. Look, 
Your family, the Kennedy family, has endured such violence, denying January 6th and whitewashing what happens is absolutely outrageous. I have a very different view of America, one of hope and optimism, like I hope all of you do. Optimism that Bobby Kennedy embodied. I see America where we defend democracy, not diminish it. I see America where we protect our freedoms, not take them away. And I see an America where the economy grows from the middle out and the bottom up. And that way, the middle class does well and the poor have a shot. And where health care is a right, not a privilege. <laughs> by the way, all the stuff we've done so far, we've done it. And guess what? We've cut the budget by a lot of money, $172 billion so far. So don't tell me it can't be done. I see a future of the planet. We save the planet, as this guy's busting his neck doing from climate change, literally. Climate crisis in, in America. And we've got to do something. The idea we send our kids to school, teaching them to duck and cover. Think about that. The idea the United States of America, Bobby, duck and cover school. More kids being killed by gun violence than almost anything else. Folks, the America we're building is significantly different. We're going to get it done. And now it's time to keep going and not slow down because there's so much at stake. Let me close with this. I know Bobby Kennedy liked Greek poets, and they're great, but I prefer Irish poets. <laughs> and that's not a joke, unfortunately. <laughs> My colleagues used to always kid me for quoting Irish poets on the floor of the Senate. They thought I did it because I'm Irish. That's not the reason. They're the best poets in the world. <laughs> the one I enjoy particularly is Seamus Haney. He wrote a poem called The Cure at Troy that reminds me of the courage of Bobby Kennedy, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, and it goes like this one stanza. It says, history teaches us, do not hope on this side of the grave, but then, once in a lifetime, that long-for tidal wave of justice will rise up and hope and history rhyme. In 2024, we have a chance to make hope and history rhyme again. Are you ready to do that with me? Are you ready to move forward, not back? Are you ready to choose unity over division? Dignity over demolition. Hey. <laughs> choose truth over lies. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, I've been doing this a long I know I only look like I'm 40, but I've been doing this a long time. But I've never been more optimistic about our future, and I mean it. You just have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There's nothing. I mean this sincerely. Think about it. We're the only nation in the world, as a student of history, I can say, that's come out of every crisis stronger than we went in. There's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thank you.